Hello everybody, it's Scott Scott here for another exciting Minecraft episode. Uh, obviously this is still going to be an RF Tools one, uh, much like the last episode we just spoke about dimensions and dimlets and creating brand new worlds. This one we're going to be talking about shield projectors and what they can do, how you can build them, uh, and how actually pretty damn uh, good they are if you want to obviously stop uh, nefarious players or your mates from uh, griefing you in your base you can obviously set this up uh, before you go offline and it will protect your base obviously you're going to need quite a bit of energy or I have to actually do that but all right let's begin shall we so with the shield projectors you've got four tiers each increasing in uh, cost to you uh, as a player but the first one doesn't really cost that much um, so if we look on the old JEI um, uh, for tier 1, you only need a couple of gold ingots, three obsidian, two redstone, and you've got your redstone torch and machine frame. Oops. Hang on. Where? Oh, God. I did it again. Where is it? Where is my projectors? Projectors. Uh, there you go. Right. Let's try that again. So then obviously you've got your four iron ingots, two gold nuggets, and your lapis or blue dye for your machine frame. Obviously you go up the tiers, you're going to need more, so like 36 bits of redstone, or four blocks. You know, a good of a maths there. <laughs> and four obsidian, and you're going to need a tier one shield projector. Obviously increases for dimensional shards, tier two and some blocks. Dimensional shards you should be able to find within the world uh, gen. Very, very low. Um... But that's another uh, thing, obviously, when we spoke about Rar of Tools, it's good to make basically a dimensional shard or world, which helps so much with that. And then obviously on the final one, you're going to need a couple of Never Stars, dimensional shards, and a Tier 3. So obviously, while you're thinking, well, why would I need higher than a Tier 1? Well, as you can probably see, we're hovering over these. It's the higher the tier, the more blocks it can obviously support. Obviously, if you've got a massive build... Uh, that needs to be protected from uh, bad players or griefers. You can obviously support 32,768 blocks, which is a lot. Um, so obviously to construct this, you're going to need your shield templates. As you see, um, that shouldn't cost too much either. And you don't need higher level uh, or higher tier versions to build it. You just need six bits of white wall, a couple of lapis and a couple of glass. And obviously if you can afford the highest tier one, like uh, tier four, which has... What was it? Uh, two Never Stars. You, you, I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to afford quite a few of these shield templates. You should be able to get eight from that as well. As you see, I've done a bit of a Blue Peter thing. I'm not sure you guys remember Blue Peter, but here's one made earlier. So I've created a little box with an entrance. Uh, for that to work, you need to have it hooked up to your shield projector tier four. And then obviously make sure on your little GUI you have on to activate. Obviously it doesn't do it at the moment. You need a smart wrench to link it, essentially. Uh, with your smart wrench, a couple of lapis and a, an ingot, uh, an iron ingot. So what we do is right-click on our shield projector itself. Oh, looks like it's disappeared. As you see, we can obviously do that. So that means it's linked. You can obviously go through it at the moment, but if we turn it on, you can now see it. That's pretty cool, right, guys? At the moment, we can obviously can only we can walk through it without any issues so what we need to do now then is add some uh, variables in it right so what we want to do is say solid uh, as you've got some different options here items players all passive At the moment we'll say players we'll add that and then we need to set it again so turn it off and on again and now it's solid not great so we can obviously jump inside here wonderful right so what happens if we were to change this to uh, damage so damage all players turn it off and on again okay should be damaging us i'm not sure if it is damaging it doesn't sound like it does it guys all right let's have a look at you oh that's probably why what we may need to do then is actually add a new one then if that's the case because it doesn't look like there's an edit button right Solid player, actually player damage, and we'll add this. So it's solid, but also it's going to damage us now. 
So what we need to do, turn it off again. I ah, should say it's hurting now. Doesn't seem to appear to be solid. That's weird. Hmm. Damage charge in there. Hmm. I would have thought you could do both then, but as you can see it was obviously do taking a lot of energy as well doing that. Which is unfortunate. So you don't want to stand in it too much. Now, the other options as well, we can obviously change the colour of it. We need to refresh it. And supply block. We don't want that one. Do we want it transparent? Or if pressed light was blocked by the shield, so we want that as well. So it's nice and clear. Beautiful. Potentially one that's solid. Doesn't look as nice either, but interesting you can still see the lights. I wonder actually if we uh move up the filter. Ah, okay. So we can do that, but we can't have it solid as well as damaging. That's annoying. Hmm. Hmm. That's going to annoy me, guys, but I'll come back to that. The other nice thing about it, though, is say if uh, we want to make it look like sand. If we change it, uh, use texture supply box, set that, then do a turn it off and on again. We've got sand. The nice thing here, you see, look at this. It's absolutely solid so as you saw me using my draconic staff of power it won't break it at all it's nigh invulnerable so as i mentioned before if you have a small little base and you obviously you got you're going off for the night but obviously it's a public server whip up one of these stick it around your base turn it on before you go off obviously you can when you spawn back in make sure you're close to it though and nobody else will be able to get in unless they're cheating which isn't great you know you don't want people to cheat right so, you think, oh, okay, well, that, that's great. That's great. Well, wh what else can you do with it? Well, what we can do is use it as a spawning device. So, if we can't destroy those blocks, what other um, mobs wouldn't be able to destroy it? Well, if we go over to my mate's base, imagine doing a wither. So, as you can see, his setup here, you've got a tier 4 shield projector. A little space for the wither to spawn in, which is great. Obviously uh, the old mob grinder as well. So obviously when it spawns, it dies automatically, but it can't destroy any of the blocks as well, which is great. So a really, really nice setup with this one, guys. As you can see, players can pass through it. Hostile, solid damage. Hmm, that's interesting. Solid damage. Hang on. What's that? Ah... Can it pass and gets damage? Okay. That's interesting. So, I wonder. Let's just go back here. Back to the training centaur. So, I wonder if we can do solid damage to players then. I didn't notice that. Maybe I rushed through it too quickly. Oh, dear. Oh, quick. Go, 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 go. Right. Let's have a look. Okay. Ah, there it is. Yes. So, there we go. We can just add that. And remove these. Uh, where are you? Delete. And delete. And then what we do... Turn it off and again. So now, if we stand on it, we go through it. We can't get through it, but we also get damaged. So imagine as a player, you're trying to get into somebody else's base. You stick one of these around it, they're going to get damaged and I can't break it isn't that cool or you can use it as a spawner for other mobs as well the nice thing about camouflaging as well imagine um, somebody tries running into your base you can make a really thick uh, wall like this but have it tran well transparent completely invisible so they're running through and they're getting damaged and they don't they're thinking well, what's going on what is going on I'm dying here and it kills them and you can't do anything about it right as I said, yeah, there's so many uh, different applications you can do with this uh, this uh, recipe. You know, it, it's really great. I'm surprised I haven't gotten into it. I, uh, it's only after I saw my mace, my mace, my mate do it. 
that I thought, well, actually, you know, it might be an interesting small spotlight that we can obviously do it. I might end up actually covering this whole build with one of these. Um, the other thing as well, the fact that you can obviously then say specific players as well. So, uh, imagine I say solid damage for a player uh, for me. Grab it. And we'll add that. So, only myself will get damaged. But anybody else wouldn't. So, we can obviously have this for specific players as well. Or, say solid damage for everybody and then not myself. And then have that above. Wouldn't that be great? Um, so, what we can do then, if we delete this. Uh, actually, I can say pass for me, players add that. And then next one. Solid damage for uh, all players. So add that. So we'll move you up. Turn you off on again. I'm not getting damaged, but I bet if one of uh, my other mates come in, they'll get damaged. So obviously you can literally could potentially have this as an invisible wall around your base. Set this up. So obviously like I've said it here. So you can walk through it, no problem. They on the other hand will get damaged by you. Isn't that wonderful, guys? Right, on that note, uh, obviously if you like this uh, little uh, video I've produced, be sure to like it and be sure to subscribe if you want to see more of this, okay guys? Until next time, bye-bye.